will be none other than our very own Elder Jeff Madre. Hear ye him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 There we go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, I want to give honor to God for my being here today and for giving me yet another opportunity to stand before God's people. Amen. And I don't take that opportunity lightly. Amen. I give honor for Apostle. And uh, Pastor Tanya Amen. for just accepting me mm -hmm. into the fold. Amen. Uh, Amen. I give honor to yes. my wife. Yes. Amen. I give honor to all of you. Thank you, Grove. And I really Amen. do feel accepted here. And I do feel a part of the family. Amen. And uh, I, I just want to, before I get into the message I've already uh, talked to uh, Apostle, I just want to have one quick song. I'm a little nervous because it's been a while since I've ministered. I got one quick song that I, I would like to uh, to uh, kind of get yeah, me yeah, into the, yeah. the flow of things. And that song that many of you probably don't know, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but it's a song that ministers to me and and, and and it goes along with how I feel and, and, and what my mindset is right now. And the song, um, the title of the song is called the end of my days. Uh -huh. And it basically says, I'm going to worship God to the end of my days. Amen. 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 And these are very new artists, but if you listen to the song, just, just hear the song and Amen. listen to the words of the song. Amen. And it really speaks volumes of how I feel because I'm going to serve the Lord to the end of my days. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
just minister to the Lord. And, 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 and that is my profession that I give to God. Till the end of my days, I'm going to serve him. Till the end of my days, I'm going to follow him. Till the end of my days. And everything that I have been through in my life, till the end of my days, I owe God everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, first of all, let me say happy Father's Day to everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Amen. I'm uh, I'm gonna try not to keep you long because I know today is Father's Day and I know everybody wants to go and get the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't gonna go get your chicken, you're gonna go get your pork chop. Or, there you go. And maybe some of y'all ain't fancy, maybe you'll go get a bologna sandwich. I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, I know you're ready to go and get it, but whatever it is, I'm not gonna hold you very, I'm not gonna hold you long. But today, um, I think it's fitting that I speak to Father's Day, and today uh, the title of the message is The Sins of a father. All right, man. The sins of a father. Now this is not a condemning message. Don't let the title fool you. This is not a condemning message. It is a message of hope. It is a message of forgiveness. But the title is The Sins of a Father. And uh, we're going to get into some things and I'm going to use as a foundational scripture. And I, I've got several scriptures and I'm going to try to uh, get through them expeditiously because like I said, I'm really not going to try to stay up here very, very long. But if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10 and I'm gonna, these are very familiar scriptures. It's not the new. I'm going to start at verse 32, and I'm going to read down to verse 36. Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 through 36. Verse 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, if we are going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives, then our actions have to line up with what our confession is. Amen. 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 It's not just about lip service. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for us to say one thing, mm -hmm. but it's not about lip service. If we make that confession, Lord, you are Lord of my life, then our actions have to line up with our confession. That's first and foremost. Um, and, you know, basically somebody once said, uh, I can't hear nothing that you say because your acts, actions speak louder than your voice. I don't want that to be said about me. Amen. All right. I'm standing up here ministering before you this morning, but I don't want you to say, Jeff, I can't hear nothing that you say because right. your actions speak so loud. All right. Amen. All right. So let make, let's make sure that our confessions and our actions are in line. Amen. We're going to confess Jesus Christ, then let's confess Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If he's our Lord, then let him be Lord. Amen. That's first and foremost. And I, now, like I said, this, this message is basically for fathers, but this particular part, this is for everybody. Amen. Amen. Okay? This is for everybody. And also, uh, uh, Jesus said in uh, uh, um, chapter 15, verse 8, he says, People draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Amen. So let's not be that person. Let's not draw nigh unto him with our mouth and, Amen. and, and, and Amen. honor him with our lips, but our hearts be far from him. This Come is what on, Jesus man. said. That's good. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is what Jesus said. So Amen. let's not let's not be that person. Amen. All right, we're gonna move on. Because I have a lot to unpack here, but I'm gonna do it in a very, very short time. Uh quarter to eleven. Okay. <laughs> Verse 33. 
But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Now, those of us in the body of Christ, we have been ostracized, we have been criticized, we have been uh, scrutinized, we have been uh, uh, discriminated against, we have been persecuted, we have been, and some of us in certain places, we have been killed for our beliefs. But the only thing that I can imagine worse than being denied by Jesus Christ to the Father, as Apostle spoke one time before, is spending eternity in the lake of fire. That's the only thing that I can think of that's worse than Jesus Christ denying me to the Father. All right. Can you think of anything else worse than that? I can't really think of nothing else worse than that. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know everything. I, I will admit, I don't know everything. Amen. But Amen. Just, just think about this for just a minute. Jesus Christ said, if you deny me, okay. I will deny you before my Father. Oh, okay. Now, I'm not even going to... This is a whole other story. I'm not even going to talk about Peter. That's a whole other subject for another day. I'm not even going to get into that bag of worms. That's for another day. But the point that I'm trying to make is I don't even want to even imagine being put in that situation where Jesus said, yeah, uh, Father, this is Jeff, but I don't know him. He denied me. He claimed that he was this and he claimed that he was that. But now I have to deny him. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 34. Now this right here, when I first came to Christ, when I very first looked at this uh, verse right here, this kind of caught me off guard. And it caught me off guard simply because, because of one of Jesus' nicknames. And I'll explain why. Verse 34 says, Think not that I am come to sin peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. And while this, <clears throat> while this caught me off guard, I'm like, he didn't come to send peace, but Jesus wanted you the prince of peace. And you didn't come to send peace on earth. I'm confused. But then he highlighted that thing to me. Yes, I'm the prince of peace, but I didn't come to send peace. I came to bring a sword. I came with a sword. And what that sword is, is judgment. And how we are judged is by the word of God. Amen. Now we're judged by the word of God, and we're not also judged by the word of God that's written, but we're judged by the word of God in flesh. Now, how we are judged by the word of God that's written, by the word of God in flesh, and we're judged by every action that we make. Now this is why we don't, this, this, this foundational scripture is going to get into where we're going later on. And you, and you ask yourself, how are we going to be judged? Which side of judgment are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the right side or are you going to be on the wrong side of judgment? There's no two ways about it. Especially when it comes to our next uh, scripture. Verse 5 or 35 says, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And that word variance is, I'm come to put in conflict. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said, I've come to do. I've come to put in conflict. In other words, I've come to put in conflict families. How is he going to put in conflict families? By the word. He didn't come to put in conflict just to be putting in conflict, but he came to put in conflict by that same sword that he was talking about. I came to bring, not, I didn't come to bring peace, I came to bring this sword. This word is what is, what is going to put families in conflict. You're either going to be on the right side of it or you're going to be on the wrong side of it. Amen. And whenever there's conflict, you got right and you got wrong. Amen. If there's two people in conflict, one is going to be right, one is going to be wrong. And unfortunately, most of the time, sometimes both of them are wrong. Amen. 
And both of them are going to be judged by that same sword, that same word of God. And then when both of them are wrong, then somebody has to be mature enough to recognize their fault, Hallelujah. recognize I'm wrong, and say, you know what? Amen. I need to humble myself. I need yes. to swallow my pride. And I need to say, God, fix me. Yes. God, help me. God, illuminate yes. in me what is wrong. Thank God, I don't want to be at conflict with my, with my family. God, I don't, don't want to be at, in conflict with, 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 with what your word is saying. I need to be changed. I need to be renewed. I need to be fixed according to your word. Not according to how I feel. According to your word, I need to be changed. A lot of times we, we will let things go by for years and years and years and years and years. And a lot of it is all flesh. It's all flesh. I know we, we, we've got family and friends and stuff like that, but it's all flesh. And it's all flesh because we don't want to yield to what the Word of God says. I, I know I ain't the only one to sin. I know I ain't the only one to sin. Now, the, Jesus is very clear here. He is very clear. Now, I'll go on to verse 36. And this right here is, is strong. He says, And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Your, eni your enemies are going to be the ones in your own house. Lord, no, no. Amen. Amen. Why is it that your enemies are going to be the ones of your own house? Because if you profess to know Jesus Christ, if you profess that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, your very first ministry is going to be in your own house. Amen. You can't minister no, you can't minister outside nowhere else unless you learn how to minister in your household That's first. Good. If you can't minister in your household first, if you can't learn how to uh, uh, apply the word of God in your house, don't even think about trying to go outside. You got to get things right in your house, in your own house first. And that's where your, your main troubles is going to be, in your house. Fathers against sons. Mothers against daughters. Because everybody got their own fleshly ideas of how things are supposed to go. But it it's not going to go the way that you, you think Amen. it's supposed to go. The, the world got their idea of things. And because and while we were in the world, we went along with what the world system said. Now that we're in Christ, we got to convert and change our thinking to what God says. Amen. 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 That's a war all by itself. And like I said, these first five <clears throat> verses are the first few verses that God illuminated to me along with a few others that was the beginning of my transformation. It was the beginning of my transformation into when I first came to Christ. These first five verses, it, it showed me a whole lot. God, you mean to tell me I got to, there's some things that I really have to change. And, and what I mean by the, some things that I really have to change is no longer seeing that there is a problem and overlooking it. Mm -hmm. And let me go in a little further. When we talk about in our household, yes, first it starts in your natural house. Mm -hmm. But Blanchard's Grove, this is a family, mm -hmm. correct? Amen. Amen. Just, so basically, Amen. we're talking about our spiritual families as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I got a problem with Brother Terry, mm -hmm. and for some reason, every time I see Brother Terry, I, I, I don't want to shake his hand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to walk right past him. Come on, man. It's just something that Brother Terry ain't did nothing to me. All right, guys. And I just got an issue with Brother Terry. Yeah. That ought not be in my family, All in right. this family.
talk to Deacon Terry. Yes, sir. All right, guys, man. But this is what we see this all the time. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ministers say, go around and hug people. And people are purposely walking the other way just so they can work. They are not to be. They are not to be. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe y'all seen some of this type of stuff before, but I guess God just want me to put this out. Maybe that's why he's up, he's got me to minister this morning, because some things just need to be said. And we need to have a real serious look deep within ourselves because this is what the word says. This ain't what Jeff is saying. This Amen. is what the word says. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So like I said, the title of the, today's message, Sins of the Father. And John, I'm, I'm going to use uh, as a subject King David as my focus. But before I do, I want to share a personal story with you about uh, my life. And um, I'm going to make it real brief, but this, my personal story ties in with the message. And it's basically about God's grace in my life, his mercy, mm -hmm. and the power of forgiveness. Amen. Okay? Amen. I'm going to make, it, I'm gonna make this real try to make it real brief and I just I don't want there to be no uh, no guessing about who Jeff is Amen. I'm an open book Amen. I used to be ashamed about a whole lot of things mm -hmm. I used to fake the funk about a whole lot of things I used to try to hide a whole lot of things mm -hmm. well what you see is what you get with me I don't try to be nothing that I'm not Amen. I, want to, I want to be real open and honest with you I'm not going to be too open and honest with you, but I'm going to be real because I want y'all to know me. I know, I realize and I understand that don't nobody know me in here. So don't nobody have a reason to dislike me. All right. You don't, you don't if you don't know me, you don't have a reason to dislike me. You don't have a reason. You shouldn't have anything against me. You shouldn't have anything against my wife. So let's just make that plain. With uh, 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 me talking about David. Amen. Okay? Amen. Amen. Now, this is just a, a little bit of my journey from childhood to manhood from, to fatherhood to sonship and, 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 and the, the, the sins that I committed and how God drew me to Him. Amen? Amen. If you just give me just a, a little bit of time. Now, and I wrote this down, and, I, and one thing that I will share with you too is uh, I'm a crybaby. So if I start crying, y'all mind your business. <laughs> I can't help you. Give me, give me, give me a tissue and, 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 and move on. Uh, um, it is what it is. Um, um, but it is what it is. Uh, the older I get, the, the, the more the waterworks come. It is what it is. I used to be ashamed of it. Now it is, it is what it is. All right. All right. So um, now. Now, when I was growing up, as a little boy, I did not live with my dad. We're talking about Father's Day here. I did not live with my dad. I didn't live with my dad, and uh, I knew basically of my dad. Let me put it to you like that. Y'all know what that, the difference is. When you know somebody, you know of somebody. Okay. I knew of my dad. I didn't know my dad, okay? So when I was a little boy growing up, my dad would come around every once a month, sometimes once every two months. Uh, I didn't have a relationship with him, but when I, when he, whenever he came around, I was just so excited to see him. And he would come around and he would make all kinds of promises to me. Yes, son, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you here, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that, and, and yada, 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 and, and every time that he would come, and I would just get so excited, and, I, and he would have me, and I would fall for it, hook, line, and sinker every single time. And every single time, he would uh, not come through. Every single time, he would disappoint me. 
And every single time when he would disappoint me, every single time I would still look forward to the next time that I saw my dad. Oh, all right. All right. Still look forward to the very next time that I saw him. Well, like I said, it never materialized, and, 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 and every single time I would still look forward to seeing him. Well, this went on for years and years and years. And every single time, little old me, I would always hold out hope that this time he ain't going to lie to me. Ah. That this time he's going to do what he said. This time is going to be different. That's just, that was me as a little, a little, little kid. That was me. I would always hold out hope that this time was going to be different. I was an optimist at that time, but that all changed. From, I went from optimism to a pessimist. So by the time I got to middle school, I'm talking about from kindergarten now, kindergarten, it went on and on and on. And by the time I got to middle school, the same thing happened over and over again. He never came through on any of his promises, never came through on anything that he said he was going to do. And by the time I got to middle school, by then, he had remarried, and he had remarried another woman that wasn't my mother. And, he, and, and, and the woman that he married, she had two kids, or she had four kids of her own, two boys, two girls. They were both older than me. So now, he had a living family that, 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 that uh, he was living with. So his wife, she was a sweet lady, sweet lady, and I had nothing against her. But now his wife encouraged him, you need to spend more time with your son, which he did. But now my, by the time I was in middle school, my heart had already started to harden to this man because of all these years, you know, I got nothing but disappointment. So then he would come and, 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 and get me, but it was different. Now it was different because the only reason why he came and got me was because his wife was saying, you need to go and, and spend more time with him. Mm -hmm. It would have been cool if he came and got me and spent more time with me alone. But no, now he came and got me and I had to spend more time with him with his, uh, with his step oh, oh. That was a straw that broke the camel's back for me. You mean to tell me you can come and get me now? I got to spend time with you, with your step children? No. And on top of that, I will see the relationship that he had with them, which was the relationship that I have been, been desiring all this time. I'm desiring this relationship with this man. This is the relationship, what I'm seeing you doing with, with, with them, them, this is the relationship that I've been, been desiring the whole time. It bothered me. It bothered me. And by the time I got to high school, I was to the point where now I'm the one that's denying him. Son, you want to come over? No, I, I'm making I'm making excuses now. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to come. I'm making excuses. I mean, I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm not saying it was right. I'm just saying this is what what happened to him. I'm just you know, not making excuses. This, I'm just saying this is what happened. So by the time I got to high school, by the time I become a senior in high school, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just, I'm just pointing over here, painting the picture. By the time I got in high school, I had full-blown hatred for my own dad. I did. I, I had full-blown hatred towards my dad. I, I, I just did. All because of the relationship that he had. Now, I was jealous of the relationship that he had with my stepbrothers and sisters. I did. I was. I wasn't jealous of things. I wasn't jealous of things. I was jealous of the relationship. They had the relationship that I always wanted. They had it. I wanted it. I couldn't get it. And it, it just did something to me. It really did. I didn't really have any problem with them because I realized, I, I guess I was mature enough to realize that it wasn't really their fault. I faulted him for the whole thing. So anyway, I'm going to fast forward. Fast forward, I'm, I'm up and I'm grown. Now, well, let me, let, me, let me take that back. Every major event in my life, 
I'm talking every major event. Any event that you can think of that you would do with your children, my dad didn't show up to nothing. No event, no award ceremony, no graduations, no high school graduation, none of my sporting. I played sports all throughout school, all throughout Little League, uh, Pony League, anything that you can think of, my dad didn't show up to none of my sport, sporting events. High school graduation, my Marine Corps boot camp graduation, my daddy didn't show up to nothing. My wedding, he didn't show up to nothing. My daddy wasn't there to none of my, nothing, no major event in my life was he there. Not one, not a one. So you mean, so you know, but I, I, in my mind, I had reason to hate this man at, by that time. All right, all right, yes, sir. So by the time I got older, as I said, I, I and got married. Then what happened was March 24th, 1994 came along. That was when my first son was born. About a year prior to that, I had prayed because we was kind of having some issues getting pregnant. About a year prior to that, I had prayed a prayer. And it was a prayer sort of similar to the prayer of Anna prayer. It wasn't exactly the same, but I prayed, I prayed to God. I said, God, I still had a whole lot of hurt. I prayed to God. I said, God, if you give me a son, he is going to know that he is loved. He is going to know that he is wanted. He is going to know that he is not a mistake. And he is going to know that, 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 that we love him. And I'm going to raise him in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. If you give me a son. That's what I pray. About a year, about a year later, we had LJ, my, my first son. Praise God. Now, praise God. Now, here's where all of my mistakes start to take hold. Here's where all of my seeds that I had sown start to reap a harvest. I, by, the, by the time he was born, I quit going to church. Mm. Stayed out of church for about four or five years. And I started to spiral down and down and down until I hit rock bottom. Anything that you can think of, Jeff did. Any sin that, um, I mean, I just got deeper into sin from uh, lying to drugs, infidelity, you name it, Jeff did it. I got to the point where I didn't care if I lived or died. Mm. And then one day, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. In all my mess. <laughs> the Holy Spirit spoke to me in all of my mess. And that's why, you know, and as, a, as Apostle said, that's, we, we have a similar uh, uh, story. I want you to go over here to this badger skin. I found myself on the doorsteps of Great Joy Worship Center. I told my wife, my wife was going to. Uh, Favorite tabernacle. She said, you want to go to church with me? Every time she would ask me to go to church, no, I ain't going. No, I ain't going. I ain't going mess with them folks. They all the same. Mm -hmm. I, was one of the, I was one of those people. All of them church folks are the same. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I was one of them people. All of them church folks are the same. I ain't going back to church. I ain't going back to church. And so then one day, God spoke to me and said, I want you to go to Great Joy. What? Mm -hmm. You want me to go here? Mm -hmm. Go to Great Joy. And from that day forward was the the day that God changed my life. Amen. That was the day that God really changed my life. Now, I gotta I, I, I gotta go back on this story real quick, real briefly. Now, one thing that I did not know, I did not know that when I didn't find out until my daddy, until my daddy's my dad died two years ago, 
Okay. But prior to that, when my son was born, as I, I, as I got uh, uh, back in, in, in church and back into the goodness, uh, the good graces of God, God worked on me. He, and, and, and God said, God said to me, okay, now you have a responsibility now. You can't no longer blame your daddy for your troubles. Amen. Amen. It's on you now. Amen. So I decided that if I want to be forgiven, I got to forgive. Amen. That was a hard pill to swallow. Yes, and I said, okay, God, I can't let my sons see me having this type of hatred and this type of animosity towards my own daddy. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, you know what? I'm the one that's got to extend the olive branch. Right. So right. I started to reach out to my dad after all these years. Started reaching out to my daddy and everything and we started to develop a relationship. And I said, you know what? I got kids. I want my, I want my sons to know their granddad. Amen. That's right. So we, we did that. And slowly but surely, we started to develop a relationship. Right. We had more of a relationship as an adult than, we, than I ever did as a child. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, my oldest son, he, he, he did more for my oldest son than he ever did for me. Mm. Praise God. Amen. 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 Came, to his, came, to his, came all the way down to his graduation. Mm -hmm. I said, this is just for I was I was, I was, I was, happy. I was happy. I was happy. I was glad. Because, you know, and he recognized, and here's the thing, I recognized that my daddy was one that whenever we would hang, hang out together, he was, he was so sorrowful of the way that he did me. He, he couldn't even look at me. My wife would tell you, he couldn't even look at me a lot of times. He would talk to me, we would, I would, we would laugh and joke, but he couldn't, he couldn't really look at me like he really wanted to. But I could tell, and I didn't need to hear. I didn't need to hear him say, "I'm, I'm sorry." I didn't need to hear. It. I could, I could, I could tell. Mm -hmm. I could just tell that he was sorrowful for, for how he treated me, and that was enough for me. That was enough for me, and I wasn't going to go back and replay everything. Now I got, I got time. Mm -hmm. I've got time to spend with my dad. Mm -hmm. He knows his his grandsons. He knows his great grandson. The very first time he met my grandson. My grandson went right to him. I like what in the world? Went right to him. So I was I was glad we had that time. Amen. The sad part about it was when he took sick. He stayed. He he was diagnosed with cancer. He got sick. Two years. Two years. Me and my wife ran backwards and forth to suffer to see him for two years. For two years. Two years, the stepchildren that he loved so much didn't come and see him not mm. once. Wow. Mm. 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 Mm.
so after David did what he did with Bathsheba and after the prophet Nathan told him the story of the rich man and the poor man and the one you lamb, and it just, this picks up right after that. Okay? Uh, verse 5 and 6. And David's anger, and again, this is after uh, Nathan had told him the story. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said unto Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. Now watch this. And he said, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no no pity. Little did David know that David was speaking his own uh, judgment. He was speaking his own judgment and restitution. Let's look at Exodus 22 and 1. Exodus 22 and 1 says, If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an, for an ox or four sheep for a sheep. Now see, David just, just didn't come up with that number off, you know, out of thin air. They were speaking out of the heart of God because that's where that's what that was God's ordinance. So he just didn't come up with that from nowhere. You know, that's where David got that from. Okay, so he just didn't come up that with that number from from nowhere. But little did he know that he was speaking to his own judgment, his own restitution. Again, we'll look at it again in Luke nineteen and eight. Luke 19 and 8 says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if, if I have taken anything from any man by false, false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Now again, here it is in the, um, in the New Testament, and they're still going by the Old Testament order. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, back to uh, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel uh, 12 and 10 it starts off like this. Now therefore, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because thou hast despised me, and thou hast taken the wife of Uriah, the high type, to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thine wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou this did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. I, and, and I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also have put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Now, remember, what he said in verse 11 and 12, and we're going to come back to that. Now, David already spoke to his own uh, his own judgment. And the four things, the, the, the fourfold judgment, and we're going, to, we're going to finish up with this right here. The fourfold judgment that happened to David, David was, was these four things. For one was the death of the child. The death of the child was the very first thing that Nathan spoke. How be it because this deed that thou hast done, uh, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. The death of the child. Shortly after Nathan spoke of what was to befall the child, the Lord struck him with the sickness. David prayed, fasted, prostrated before the Lord for the child's life. And on the seventh day, the child died. Imagine seeing your child suffer a sickness like that 
knowing that your sin was the reason for it. That's a hard pill to swallow right there. Amen. Knowing that you are the cause of it. Number two, the second, uh, the second part of that judgment, the sin of Amnon. The same lust that David had for Bathsheba, Amnon had for his own sister, Tamar. When his friend, Jonadab, I call him his frenemy. When his frenemy, Jonadab, found out how he felt, he devised a plan to get them alone. And, and I'm basically, uh, you know, shortening this, giving you my little uh, short version. I'm not going through the whole thing. Um, he devised a plan to get them alone. By faking the sickness and telling David that he needed Tamar to come and cook for him, he sent everybody else away and forced himself on her. In other words, he raped his own sister. Now, imagine you are a father with a son, and your son does something like that to his own sister. After he did it, his love for her turned to hatred. She then went to live with her brother Absalom. And Absalom waited for two years to get revenge. Absalom had him killed. And that same friend of me, that same friend, Jonadab, who was the one who came up with the plan for Ammon in the first place, was the very one that goes back and tells David what Absalom had did. The same friend. That's why we've got to be careful who our friends are. Jonah Dad was the same one that, that told uh, uh, Amnon, hey, this is what you need to do if you want to get Tamar uh, alone. He's the same friend that he, now he wants to run back and tell David. David, he's dead. Amen. Amen. Be careful. Number three, the rebellion of Absalom. When he had killed when, 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 um, when he had Amnon killed, he fled and lived in Geshur for three years. But he didn't know that David was already comforted and wanted to see him. And after some time, uh, finally he comes out of exile back to Jerusalem. And eventually, with the help of Joab, he was restored to full court privileges. But Absalom was working behind the scenes, gathering the following of his own to overthrow his daddy and become king. By the time Absalom learned, uh, by the time David learned what Absalom was up to, he, his forces were so strong, now David had to flee. Mm -hmm. Now because uh, Hushai gave Absalom some wrong advice, he gave David time to prepare uh, his army. They had a bloody battle, about 20,000 lost, and the Absalom and I'm just, like I said, this is a, the abbreviated version. Absalom got, ended up getting his head stuck in a tree. And it was Joab, the one that finished him off. That was, that was three. Now, this is not in chronological order. Remember what I said when I said, don't forget verses 11 and, and 12 earlier. 2 Samuel uh, 16 and 21. Now I'm almost done, I promise you. 16 and 21, it says, uh, 2 Samuel 16 and 21, it says, And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go into thy father's concubines, which he had left to keep the house, and all Israel here. And all Israel shall hear that thou art aboard of thy father. Then shall all the lands, uh, uh, all the hands of, of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the, house, uh, upon the top of the house, and Absalom went into, in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. That was um, the conclusion of what 
they had already was already spoken, but Nathan had already spoken. Like I say it was it's not in chronological order, but that was the conclusion of that. So that was the third of the of the uh, of the judgment. And finally, the fourth part of the judgment was the death of Adonijah. And although David didn't live to see the death of Adonijah, it was the fulfillment of, of the judgment. David promised Bathsheba, her son, the throne. Adonijah thought it should have been him. Solomon knew of his plans, and he had him killed. And finally, the last, uh, the last scripture is Psalm 51. That's it. Psalm 51. 1 through 11. And this is a prayer of David when after Nathan came to him and, 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 and then on close the Bible. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. I'll stop right there for just a second. You remember a couple of weeks ago when an apostle said, uh, we talked about owning your sin? We got to own it, folks. Amen. We can't deny when we do something. Right. We have to own it. Amen. You do it, you own it, and you move Amen. on. Amen. If you don't own it, you act just like you ain't never did nothing. Amen. If we don't own it. Verse 4, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part that thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. I say this all the time. Amen. Create in me a clean heart Amen. and renew in me a right spirit. Amen. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. And last, I leave you with this. If y'all don't remember anything else, but the three points that I'm going to leave today is this. First of all, own your faults. Amen. That's the first thing. The second thing is, we are forgiven, but the seeds we sow is going to reap a harvest. Amen. Amen. God will forgive every sin that we've ever committed, past, present, and future. Right, but the seeds we sow mm -hmm. is going to reap a harvest. Amen. And last, be on the right side of judgment. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Don't let everybody stand, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, amen. amen. Praise God, praise God. Come on, give the Lord another hand. Amen. amen. Come on, let's go ahead and get the offering. Amen. Before God, Just keep standing, remain standing. Amen. amen. Give us some marching music there, Sister Andy. Fathers today. Amen. Yes. amen. Uh, all of us Amen. have missed the mark at some point and experienced some of the things that the man of God spoke of today. Amen. Amen. We don't have to continue that tree. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for every father in the house. Lord, we have all been scarred at some point in our lives. Thank you for grace. That we can do it different. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. We can walk in truth. 
yes. and make sure Thank you, that our actions yes. line up yes. with your word. Yes. If we've done anything to hurt anyone yes. because we were scarred, yes. forgive. Yes. Yes. And may we be cleansed and show our children yes. the right way. We thank you and we give you praise for every house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to be dismissed by.